Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 12th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to understand how we can insert data into tables in SQL. The insert query is used to insert data in a table and using the insert query you can add data into a table one row at a time. And uh, there are a couple of options that you have with your insert query. The first one is that you specify the columns in which data is to be stored. And uh, the other option is that you do not specify the columns. And if you're doing this, that is if you're not specifying the columns in which uh, your know, data is to be stored, then you have to make sure that the order in which you put in the values in the insert query is the same as the order in which you want the values to be stored in the table right and if this is uh, you know uh, seeming complicated then don't worry we're going to see the insert query in action in just a minute and uh, things will get clear to you guys then and uh, the syntax for the first type is you mention the keyword insert and then the keyword into then the name of the table in which you want the data to be inserted and then within parentheses you specify the order of the columns in which you want the values to be inserted right so if you've got n columns or if you want to put in your data in n columns then you type in uh, you know column one column two column three up to n columns and then uh, you type in another keyword values and then within another set of parentheses you specify the values that you want uh, to be inserted in the columns one to n right and the syntax for the second uh, option with the insert query obviously as i said you do not have to specify the columns in which you want the values to be stored so you know this is a little crisp you type in insert then into and then the name of the table and till this point the syntax of this uh, is pretty much the same as the syntax of this and uh, you just don't specify the columns within the parentheses and then uh, the rest of the part is also the same so now we're going to insert data in uh, the employee table that we created a couple of tutorials ago uh, using the MySQL workbench. So before we insert data in the employee table, let's uh, check out the structure of the employee table so that we know what kind of information we have to put in it, right? And to do that, I'll use the DASC command and I'll type in employee because that's the name of my table. Press the control enter combination and I get the uh, names of the four columns in the employee table. So the first one is ID, the second one is name, third one is DOB and the fourth one is email and uh, ID and uh, ID is an integer field and uh, name and email both these fields are varchar fields and DOB is date time field right so now we know what kind of data we have to put in this table so let me reduce the size of this result set a little bit if it's possible for me to do that well yes I can do that and uh, I'll type in the keyword insert and we're going to check out the first uh, you know uh, option syntax first so insert into and then uh, the name of the table which is employee and uh, then within parentheses i'm going to specify the columns in which i want the data to be stored so the first one is id the second one is name the third one is dob and the fourth one is email right and uh, on the next line i'll type in the keyword values and uh, you know, if you are putting in numeric data in a field, then you don't have to put your data within single quotes. If you're putting character data or do or, or date time data, then you have to put that data within single quotes, right? So since ID is a numeric field, I can just type in, you know, some numbers. So I'll type in 1901 and uh, then uh, I'll type in my name within single quotes. And uh, what the hell just happened? So Madhur and uh, I'm going to put another comma and then I'll put in my DOB and uh, we discussed the format of the date time field that is the format in which the date time values are stored in SQL uh, you know when we discuss the date time data type uh, you know in the tutorial on date on data types so the, the the format is you have to first specify the year and uh, that's 1989 and then you put in a hyphen and specify the month which uh, is 11 for uh, me and uh, I was born on 20th November 1989 by the way and uh, I'll also specify the time and to do that you have to put in a space character and then the hours in the 24 hour format so I was born on 11:55 a.m. and uh, I don't know the second so I'm just going to put in 00 there and uh, then I'll also 
put in my email address which is going to be within single quotes again because it's a character field the email field and uh, madhur bhatia at the rate of hotmail.com and uh, that's it so i'll put in the closing parentheses at the end and uh, the semicolon to terminate the statement and when i press the control enter key combination i get in the output section the green check mark and uh, i see that my statement was processed successfully so if you want to verify whether your statement was uh, whether your insert statement was executed successfully or not i'm just giving you this information and we're going to talk about the select statement in detail uh, you know in a couple of tutorials but you use the select statement and you put in the asterisk symbol after the select keyword and then the keyword from and then the name of the table from which you want to see your rows right so i'm just telling you this we're going to discuss this later on and uh, there you go you see in the results set that uh, in the id field we have uh, 1901 as the entry in the name field we have mother as the entry you have uh, the date of birth value and the email value as well right so this is when you specify the you know column set after the insert into a uh, table name thing and uh, you know you also specify the values corresponding to each of the column that is there in the table what if you do not want to specify this and why would you firstly not want to include uh, this thing uh, in your insert into statement if suppose your table consists of lots of columns and uh, you know you want to put values in each column that you have in your table right so in that case to insert data if you want to insert 15 rows and you know you would have to copy this part 15 times and you know you would also have to type in 15 uh, you know if, if it's got 20 columns if your table has got 20 columns and you have to type in 20 column names within the parentheses right and that can be pretty boring and uh, pretty time consuming so in order to avoid that you can just type in insert and then into and uh, you know the name of the table which is employee and you know you don't have to put in the column set in the parentheses and you can directly type in the keyword values and then you know just type in some values so 2000 and uh, the name could be abc and uh, the date of birth could be 2013 and uh, 110 uh, and 08 and uh, then I can, you know, also type in some time value like uh, 12, uh, 54, and uh, 11, right? And I can type in some value for the email address field too, like abc, abc at the rate of gmail.com. You put a semicolon at the end to terminate the statement. When I press the control enter, key combination now again I see that the insert into statement was processed successfully and uh, I would use the select star thing again to see if uh, my tables got the data that I just put in it employee and there you go now you see that the table has two rows the first row is as a result of the first insert into statement that we executed and the second row is a result of the second one that we executed so a couple of things that you have to keep in mind if you're using if you if you're fond of the second uh, you know uh, option of insert into the the things that you have to keep in mind are that uh, if you're using this then the order in which you specify the data you know in the value set that is within the parentheses after the values keyword it has to be the same as the order in which the fields exist in the table right and that order you can figure out by executing the describe command right so if in case the order is different then you can get a type mismatch error or you know it could happen that the email address is stored in the name field and the name is stored in the email address field or the date time is stored in some you know other field so that kind of thing can happen and in order to avoid that i would suggest you to you know keep your tables short so if you want to put 15 columns in your table then you know try to somehow figure out ways in which you can split you know uh, f the the 15 columns into three tables like you know have three tables instead of one and you keep five columns in one table five another and five another so you know that's going to help you organize your data in a better way and also while inserting data into uh, tables it will be easy for you 
right so thank you so much for watching this tutorial i'm gonna see you guys in the next one in which we'll discuss something interesting and important for sure and please subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already and uh i'm gonna see you soon